All right, YouTube, it's time for the Occult Video 67, Mixing Gods and Pantheons and Atheists Who Venerate Deities. Uh, something that a lot of the purists within spiritual movements, they have a big problem about this. Uh, well, if you don't believe in this deity, you shouldn't venerate them. Mixing pantheons is wrong on some ethical basis or something like that. Uh, I, su I should perhaps explain first and foremost religiosity, spirituality, and theism or the lack thereof, are three entirely separate things. They often coincide coincidentally, but at the same time, they're not really linked. Like, I am more or less, in a de facto sense, I'm an atheist. I don't specifically venerate any specific group of, of beings as though they were literally real. Um, I believe in the spiritual. I'm a spiritual individual, though, but I, and I'm also not religious. I don't belong to any congregation or body, and I do mix. Uh, in ritualism, in rites, I do mix these figures together. And I see no problem with that. You look at the Roman tradition when the Romans were expanding. Every time they encountered some group of pagans, they absorbed their religiosity. They took all the spells, all of the rites, all of the rituals, all of the deities, all the demigods that they could find, and they began venerating them. There was a large and growing military-based Mithra cult in Rome at its height. Uh, for some time, it was considerably large, and a large proportion of the military were Mithraists. Um, towards uh, the end of the Roman Empire, before the collapse of the western half thereof, uh, a lot of people in, in certain areas, uh, something like 10% of the empire was made up of Judaists. And it wasn't just in Israel and the surrounding region, it had spread into other metropolitan areas, and there were a lot of people practicing Judaism. Christianity ended up displacing all these pagan cults as the main religion of Rome, the state religion. Uh, it didn't even really help to reduce the rate of people worshipping these other beings in the outlying areas. It was just a control over the, the suburbs of Rome and places like that. <clears throat> so, I don't really have a problem with the concept of mixing pantheons. And when I observe the Romans especially, of course, what they tended to do is they would liken some foreign deity, Mithra or whatever, with their pantheon, they would match them up and say, oh, which one of the gods is this closest to? Because they did believe in their Roman gods. They thought these were just different expressions or variants or tales about those same beings. And when there was no overlap, of course, they were worshipped separately and were absorbed into the Roman pantheon. And this is a system that's several thousand years old. Uh, it's not exactly a bunch of new agery. And this has happened with other cultures as well. You would think of Judaism itself. Christianity is just a modified variant of Judaism with some extra canonical materials thrown in and a tale about an undying savior. Judaism never penned a word down on a palm leaf until after the period of Babylonian captivity. And, and that one was the real period of captivity. They were never held hostage in Egypt. They went there because of famine and, and worked as part of the local population and were not particularly abused. No, they were never slaves in Egypt. Slaves didn't build the pyramids. That's a, an old wives' tale. But what did happen is while they were in Babylon, their stories got mixed with Babylonian stories that were based on Sumerian stories. Of course, the Babylonians inhabited the same region. Uh, what ended up happening is you have the filtration of things like the Epic of Gilgamesh into Genesis, creating the story of Noah. I'm not saying they didn't have their own separate similar traditions, but it's fairly obvious that there was Babylonian influence into some of these practices. You'd think of the Asherah cult or something like that. At the time, the idea that Yahweh had a wife and that they were kind of these weird alien-looking beings, almost, with like the faces of goats and hooves and everything. It looks like an illustration from the Grand Grimoire or something like that. Uh, this is fairly common throughout antiquity and, and through uh, modern times. It's not something new that a bunch of hippies got together and said, well, let's uh, say fuck history and just cobble together all these deities that we happen to like. I'm going to worship Hades and, and Artemis, and I'm also going to worship Jupiter, and then I'm going to worship Mithra, and, and, and I'm going to applaud Zoroaster, and then I think I'll deify Charlie Chaplin, and I'll worship him too. It's not some New Age movement. It's been happening since the dawn of time when two religious groups meet one another, 
if they're not killing each other as heretics and evildoers, they tend to cross over and absorb at least some of one another's material. As far as atheists venerating pantheons or venerating deities, I also see no problem with that. You've got to remember, about a quarter of all the Catholics, according to their own polling, are atheists. They don't even believe in the Catholic God. But they go to church anyway, they still take communion, they still live a Catholic lifestyle because it's cultural. And I see no problem with this. In fact, I think it's probably better than being extremely religious, extremely pious, and sort of browbeating others into believing the way that you do. I think it's, it's certainly more culturally acceptable in the civilized sense of the Western world today. Uh, but it's common. It's, it's not an uncommon thing. A, a large number of Jews, for instance, self-proclaimed, are atheists. They don't really care about the spiritual stuff. They're Jewish by culture. They're Jewish by practice. They, they have these enculturated practices as part of their life. But they're not constantly going to the synagogue and, and the, the Wailing Wall and stuff like that. Christians do it. Muslims do it. There are a great many Muslims. You'd think of the Alawite groups within Syria. Uh, they're, they're not, they, they crossed over with pagans hundreds of years ago. And they don't spend all of their time stoning people for disagreeing with them. It's, it's an exception to the rule within uh, quite zealous Islam in some of these states, <clears throat> where really the state and religion are the same thing. You'd think of Saudi Arabia or Afghanistan or Pakistan or something like that. Or, or the Turkmen's, subjugated, of course, to their own national book, the little green book that their uh, former, f former first president wrote or something like that. Which is, by the way, a weird work that I really want to obtain and read for myself because it's a, it's legendary for being strange, uh, being a little bit arcane and uh, tribalistic, a little bit a uh, little bit odd and nutty. But yeah, there's no problem with atheists doing this. They always they have, they will. Uh, when you look back on some of the greater figures within philosophy that early Christianity really took form from. Some of them were more or less atheistic, a lot of them were deists, and really they debated over the status of a god or gods, if any existed at all, on a constant basis, and they had no problem with this. It's only later that you get the idea of religious zeal to the point that people begin questioning whether it's acceptable to question anything within a religion. You get an organized, sort of corporatized religious body that hands down dictates, and if you disagree, oh, guillotine for you, oh, you get burned at the stake. We're going to impale this person, too, because they're extra bad. Um, there's, there's really no problem with mixing pantheons or with people who are not particularly religious still venerating a deity in, in a ritualized form because it's always happened. It's, it's actually part of authentic human spiritual tradition to do these things. It's not actually outside of the norm. What's outside of the norm, uh, historically speaking, if you go back thousands and thousands of years, is the idea that people, instead of killing each other over land and just praising their gods if they win, they would actually praise their gods beforehand, say, oh, well, these heretics, we need to lay waste to them. And it's sort of an inversion of the reasoning behind human struggle. Instead of praising the gods when you lose the battle or, or making sacrifices, I mean, uh, making sacrifices to appease them if you lose and praising them if you win and assuming that the gods were looking at you with favor and sort of subjugating those religious ritualisms to more of a human condition. It's, it's actually the flip side. You get into the medieval era, certainly, and you see people proclaiming, oh, well, this group of people has displeased the Lord, so we must kill them. Now, of course, the real reason was they wanted their land, they wanted their gold, they wanted their women, they wanted their fields, whatever you know, they happened to have that they needed or felt they needed. And then they would put a religious layer over it and frame it as a great crusade or something like that. The crusades were the same when the Islamists marched across North Africa uh, under the Moors, or when the Ottomans invaded parts of Europe. It's the same exact thing. Oh, well, we've got to do this for Allah, you know, everyone's got to bow or, or get the sword. Uh, really, though, it was about wanting to expand an imperialistic political ideology. This is, by the way, exactly the same as how ISIS or Al-Qaeda operate. Yes, the religion, we can't ignore the fact that the religion is openly being used as the reasoning behind these things, but it is subjugated to political or social purposes, let's face it. Uh, as far as atheists go, there are plenty of atheists in the pulpit in Catholic churches. 
There are plenty of atheists in the pulpit of Protestant churches. There are plenty of atheists bowing down before Allah in every mosque. There are atheists in the synagogue. There are atheists in neo-pagan sort of New Age temples. They're all over the place. And yet they're still venerating. I fail to, I really don't care whether they do this. Uh, the idea of mixing pantheons, I do it. Um, although I don't believe in many of these beings in a truly theistic sense, I'm really more apotheistic. I used to consider myself <clears throat> a deist. And I said, well, you know, yeah, there's probably some divine source to the universe, but at the same time, it doesn't seem too concerned with what's going on. You look at the world around you. Uh, then I became more of a soft atheist and said, well, I, I'm... Just, uh, I just can't bring myself to believe in this crap anymore. Then I became, and that's what I am now, more of an apatheist. I just don't care about the debate anymore. Nobody gets anywhere by even discussing it. It just turns into a pitchfork and torch-wielding mob, no matter where you are on the internet or in the real world. People just, they lose all sense of reason and decency when they talk about such things. There's a reason why I've made fewer anti-theistic videos lately, or fewer anti, like, Christian, Jew, Muslim videos. Uh, it's because it, it doesn't really add anything to the public debate over these things, because the average person is incapable of having a philosophical debate over the existence or non-existence of any deity, let alone their own, uh, because it touches them on such a deep level that they get all emotional and the sense and reason sort of abandon them. So yeah, that's a little bit about the idea of mixing gods and pantheons, atheists in the pulpit sort of stuff. Uh, I'm not seeing that big a problem with it. It's really part of human tradition. That's about all. Peace out.